Hey garden friends, welcome back to Flower Patch. This is October, well October 2nd, and there's a lot of fall chores that I need to get done, and I'm gonna take you along on one, and, well two actually. It both has to do with clematis, or clematis, or clematis. I've heard it pronounced several ways, and I'm sure you have too, but they all work because you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to share with you how I transplant a clematis that is not doing well in the area that it's at. And then I'm going to share with you how I trim one back and then put up a trellis so that I can make sure I can enjoy the blooms la next year. Because this last year, um, they bloomed on the other side of my fence and I would have to walk around down into the back alley in order to enjoy them. And I really wanted them on this side. so. We're gonna do those two chores. I'm gonna show you one that is a total mystery as to what is wrong with it, um, but sometimes that just happens. And I just wanted to share that with you in case you have one that's failed you too. Okay, now I'm gonna get going with my chores. So I know it's rather obscured down here, so I'm gonna get down here and I'm gonna show you. Now this particular clematis, whoops, almost fell over there. This particular clematis is called bourbon. And there's so much blooming here. I'm having a hard time stepping in here. Um, I don't want to mess with any of these blooms because they're going to be so pretty. This week we're going to get into the low 80s and it's going to be so nice. But so that you can see down here where my hand is, is a bourbon clematis. Now this is a lower growing, meaning shorter. It only gets to about four or five feet and has a beautiful red flower in the spring. And... Um, I put it here hoping to have it climb this obelisk, but it must be too crowded or something. It just doesn't like it here. I formally had it on the front obelisk with the Eden rose. Um, and as we were training things there or changing things around, I moved it back here. Um, now I have to dig it up and move it again. So I'm gonna do it as carefully as I can, not to disturb what is blooming now so that I can continue to enjoy the, the other blooms through October. And if I have to sacrifice a couple, that's, that's how it goes. But that's the one I'm going to focus on to transplant. So now I'm gonna get my shovel, my gloves, and some clippers to clip back some foliage so I can see, have a good shot of how to dig it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut back the crocosmia leaves, which are these strappy leaves. I love my crocosmias. Um, and they've had plenty of time to absorb nutrients for the next year, so it's not gonna be a big deal. Now this Black-Eyed Susan looks like it might be in the way. I'll see, I'll bend it forward a little bit and then I can tie it back up. I really didn't wanna cut that back right now. That's a columbine and that can go because it's just a free cedar and I don't need it there. All right, I'm getting back here to, uh, now it's funny, it, not funny, but this is putting on new growth here, and it was hidden by all that, but it just didn't do well here, and it hasn't. It's been here a couple years, and I had hoped that it would come through fine and eventually settle in and get going, but it never has. So this right here I pulled up is a larkspur, and it has a few seed pods on it, so I'm gonna gently set that aside because I want to spread those seeds in the front border where I spread the um, Black Eyed Susan and the Daisy seeds in one of my recent videos. There, because I wanted everything to come up from seed there and be free because that's a tough bed and I didn't wanna to have to spend any money on it. Last time I spent a good sizable amount of money and the plants did not work there. I had to replant them somewhere else all that so anyways until I decide what I want to do up there I want to just seed stuff that I know grows for me okay basically I have all of everything pulled away I'm trying to pull some weeds gently away find where the actual root mass is it looks like it's back here oh no that's a morning glory that I don't need in there okay that's not it then I just don't want to break it or cause any problems. 
All right, there it is. It's on the opposite side of this obelisk. So to be able to get to it, I'm going to have to pull the ob obelisk out. And I will pull out this part. I need to go look up what pruning type bourbon is. If it's a type one, I don't want to cut back anything because then it won't um, get any blooms next year. So I have a sweet pea climbing on this. It's blooming right now and I want to get the seeds from it. So anyways, hopefully you can see what I'm doing a little bit. I'm so focused on what I'm doing. I'm not looking in the camera to see if it's showing through. Okay, whoops. Okay, there is the clematis. There's another piece in here. Okay, so there was two vines coming off of it. Okay, right there is where it's at. I've got this weed here I need to get out. I really don't want to transplant that weed. Oxalis, which is probably got a piece in there and it probably will come up, but I'll take care of it later. Okay, so I kind of, kind of, I have all around the roots cleared out. So I will get my shovel and get in here and I'll try to dig down as deep as I can because clematis can have very deep tap roots. So I'm gonna interject here that this may not work I may lose this clematis because of trying this move. Now I have moved them before, been very successful, but there is a risk. There's a risk that I will kill it. Now being this is early October, the ground is still warm, there's a good chance that this will just put down new roots and take off and be fine. But I just wanted to let you know that there is a caveat that you could lose your clematis entirely if you decide to try to move them. Okay, so I have everything cleared away for the most part in this area. And now I'm gonna get as far back from, not as far back, well, get it get back a few inches. Looks like, it feels like there's something really hard in there. And I'm gonna dig down. Well, it's not, shovel's not going in there. There's something very solid in the ground here that is blocking my way. So this is gonna be even riskier than I anticipated as far as being able to get this up. And being there's so many plants in here, it's gonna to be tough to get way down to the top root. So, okay. All right. So, here is the roots. So I see some that it broke off and whatever. This will go into shock, but I'm gonna share with you something that I'm gonna to do to help it to recover. So that the roots can get well-established, uh, help with the transplant shock and all of that, I'm gonna use some um, organic wrap. You've heard me talk about this before. The little rose that I shared with you a couple of videos ago that I refurbished, that was a bargain rack, find that just giving it that soak that I did in the Rev really perked it up so much. I was impressed and I've been using this stuff for a little while, but I really let it soak for half an hour or more. I'm looking over at it and it has just put on tremendous growth. Now it couldn't have gotten anything from the new soil yet because it's only been a week, maybe two, no, probably a week and because it hasn't reached out into that yet. And then I even put it up into a bigger pot. So it hadn't had a chance to really establish with any of that. It had to be the Rev that helped it to just look wonderful. I had this all summer. I had been meaning to repot it. I'd just been watering it and fertilizing it. It didn't do a whole lot. It just kind of sat there. So. I was astounded when I repotted it, had soaked it in the Rev, how much it just came to life and just started blooming. So I want the same for this. I want this to have the best chance to survive. So I'm gonna put maybe an ounce of the Rev in here. And then I'm gonna pour water in, enough to cover the roots. And I am gonna let this soak while I go and I'm going to show you how I'm going to revamp another clematis. And when I say revamp, I'm just going to cut it back, put up a trellis for it, and make sure next spring as it comes to life, 
comes back into you know growing, that it will climb up what I want it to climb up and not the back fence. So this is bourbon soak. I'm going to look up the bourbon, what type of uh, pruning type it is. So I'm very careful with it and how I treat it. Okay, let's go and revamp. It's an HF Young Clematis and it's along my back fence next to my tool shed. Let's go. So right here is my HF Young Clematis. And it's even putting on new growth. Now this thing bloomed all summer long, but the bloom showed over there. And though I can enjoy it from there, I have roses and stuff back there. I wanted it to bloom, climb up this and climb up over. And I'll probably put some screws or something to put some mesh up there so it can cling to it. And I'm gonna use this along the side. So I'm gonna cut it to fit. I'm gonna cut it to here. Cause then I can hang it up here and then have make sure all spring when it's growing, I can train it along here and then it will go on up. So let me see, let me mark that with my fingers. Do I want? Yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and do this one. Cut it right here. And I'm gonna do that right now. So, cause if I move, I'll forget where I wanna cut it. So right there, let me get my bolt cutters, which this works better than little wire cutters. If you have puny strength hands like me, and I'm just gonna go along. Now this is a piece of remesh from a panel that you get in the concrete department of Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, and I used them, you've seen them, I used it in my tomato house, my little DIY greenhouse for the trellis for the things to climb up. Now this one had gotten a little bent. So next I will, I could have, well, I should, instead of putting the screws in for this, which I could do, let me measure really quick. I get ahead of myself. Okay, I can, anywhere along there, put the two screws that this will hang on and that will be sufficient, but I need to cut it back. Now I'm not gonna get any more blooms this season being it's October. So I need to just pull it all off here. HF Young is a type two blooming, uh, pruning type, which meaning it, I can cut it down to like six, eight inches right now and it will be fine. and just start growing next spring really well. I'm just getting some of these morning glories off of here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna kind of prune back a little bit of this viburnum. Not too much because um, I want that evergreen structure there. So I'm gonna get my cutters and I will start pruning on that. So I brought you down in here close. So you can see, look at here, it's already putting out new growth here. And um, it's just doing beautiful. But as I said, I'm not gonna get any more blooms this fall so it's time to give it a prune a lot of times you won't wouldn't prune this till spring or uh late winter but this works fine for me too um, plus at that time of year we have so much snow many times that i couldn't get to it anyways so i've done this for years a lot of people would dispute with this but that's okay i do what works for me and sometimes i do have to break the rules so I would say I'm cutting it probably eight inches from the ground, the roots, where the roots are. And I'm just going in there and cutting all of it. This one has, a, it's been here a few years, so it has a really good root system. Lots of nice canes coming off of it. Now I have others that are going over that, that direction, and I wanna pull those out because I want the growth to come up here. Let me cut this um, iris back in here. I don't want this piece of viburnum coming forward so that can come out. And this can come out. While I'm in here, I'm just gonna pull out anything I don't want in here. This strawberry, I don't want in here. And of course the weeds, the oxalis. All right, so 
see what I'm pulling where. So this can come off of here. Anything up above can come out. Yeah, this put out tons of canes this year. That means it was happy here. Gophers obviously left it alone, which I'm thrilled for. So as I said, this next coming spring, I'll make sure all this growth, instead of going back to this fence and climbing, it will stay up here. And that's my goal. I will, since this one grew so quickly uh, this year, I will have to stay on top of it to make sure that that does it. Because obviously, it really liked going back there. This is a piece of wire I had for it to climb up, which some did, but not enough of it. So... I will pull that wire out of there. And all of this. Like I said, I'll cut the viburnum back to where I want that over there. I want the clematis to show over here and not be swamped by the viburnum. This is a, did I say it already? This is blue muffin, which it has these pretty really white flowers, but not like the pom-pom ones, but it gets these little blueberries. I don't know if you can see that. Oops, I knocked one off, but the birds love them. So that's a win there. And it just is a pretty, I wanted it for evergreen and kind of block the eye from going back to the back here, where you just look into my neighbor's backyard in the back of their house. So I wanted to stop the view and it works good for that. Plus it's just pretty and it's a native, so just cleaning this all up. I will come in with some mulch when I get it. I usually buy bulk. Though I have found there's one and it was recommended by Janie over at Dig Plant Water Repeat. And it was one from Home Depot and I really, it's a pathway bar. And I used it in my front in a pathway and I really like it. So I think it would make a great mulch back here. Sometimes I just get my turkey compost and I mulch with it, but I think I really would like this other one. Okay, so let's see, got that. These pieces cut back. Make sure I have it all. Okay, that one was going down the back wall. All of that bloomed and bloomed and I didn't get to enjoy it as much as I would have liked. Okay. So yeah, this one has lots of growth coming from the base. So that should really cover this tool shed, little tool shed, it has been made from reclaimed lumber for me, up this side and up over, and even could have a little bit across the front. Okay, I just wanna get this all off of here. And there is a hollyhock back here that fell over, so. I'm surprised the gophers didn't eat it. The last year they ate all my hollyhocks back here, but they have been less thick this year, and I'm not sure why. Okay. Get going and just keep sitting more and more. All right, there is the main job I wanted to do, and that was to clean up this clematis and cut it back. So now I'm going to step up and I will pull out the screws I have in here for the wire, and then I will hang the remesh panel on here. So now I have the clematis chop back. Looks like the majority of it is about 12 inches. I could take it back a little bit more, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Excuse my bum. Um, and I am going to put some wood screws up here. I already have the piece of remesh panel sitting here so I could get kind of a height and I'm gonna get in here, put these in as straight as possible. Maybe I'll just toss that right there. That's noisy. Okay, another hole. Don't look like it's about right. I'm not too worried about this being perfectly straight. Just 
enough to hang this thing on. and that way it has some little gap so that I can weave the clematis. Let me see if I can step out of your way. That way I'll be able to weave the clematis in and out. In fact, some of it, I could actually push it down in between some of the vines here because it's coming up in several spots from the ground and then it will naturally find this a little bit better. So I'll do that. So it's going right down the middle of the plant and put that up there. Okay, so it kind of leans out and then I can easily train it up. So second clematis, that's HF Young, beautiful lavender. And hopefully it'll bloom next summer like it did all summer this summer. And that would be beautiful climbing up. And I could use some of these screws I took out down there put up here and have it train it along here so it can come up and over and be just gorgeous. It looks like this tool house is leaning a bit and that could be from the gophers undermining it. And But that would be real easy just to lift it up and put some shims under it and then it'll level it back up. So another chore done. Now I think it's been long enough for the first one, the bourbon soaking, that I can now find a place for it that I think it may do better. And we will plant it. It took me the longest time to figure out where I even wanted to plant this clematis, this bourbon clematis. Now it probably will get about this tall. And um, this is my Crown Princess Margareta rose that's climbing up the porch here. And then over here, I can't remember what clematis that is, but this spot right here would be perfect. And this can climb up here, be a pretty red. I think it gets enough sun. I know my Warsaw Nike is right there, does beautifully. So I think this would be a really good spot to give that one the bourbon a head start and see how it does. And remember, I can always move it. A couple of years down the road, I find out I don't like it here, I can move it. So don't overly stress things. Most things you can move if they don't work where you put them first straight out of the box. So I will get my digging tools and get the clematis still soaking in the rev and get it planted. Okay, so I cleared this spot here next to the arbor and uh, there were some of these rhizomes from the iris growing in here that were dead. That part that was the old part of the rhizome and it had grown out this way and this way. So I'll still get irises there. I should probably dig those up because they're so close to the rows because these ones are the same and this one will have the pretty flower come spring. And you can even see some of the roots still sticking out there. But here is where I'm going to plant that, this clematis. And even there's some rhizomes coming over here. I think there's one right over here. Yeah, and it's underneath here where it got smushed by the bamboo falling off the deck. But I'm getting this Nice and deep, and I found a big gopher hole. Dog on it. Gopher tunnel. Ah, I knew they were in here. So I gotta kind of fill that in. Now they haven't been as bad this year as they had in the past. So I'm not sure what's going on, if the deterrents I've been putting down are working or what. We also have had a fox. So I was hoping Mr. Fox was eating some of them. But uh, anyway, so there is that. And, oh, that looks like a daffodil bulb. I'll put that back down in there. And here is my clematis soaking in the rev. And there's the beautiful roots, which I will put down there. And I put them a little bit, even the base of the vine underneath there. That case, if it gets to that particular wilt that is normal, not normal, average, or can, 
some clematis are susceptible to it. When you cut it to the ground, it will regrow from the roots if you have some of the vine underneath the soil too, so it doesn't kill even the roots. So I'm gonna go ahead and train this up here for now and let it go. This is, I learned, a type two pruning type clematis. So that means come spring, I will prune it back to, you know, six or seven inches. I probably will leave it a little taller, like more like 12 inches, so it's already trained up here and I don't have to keep track of it too much to help it. And I'm just gonna pull this rhizome here out because I don't need that one. And I can see it there and I want it pulled out. Ooh, look at this. This is, that is a night crawler. So it needs to get, go back under there, Mr. Nightcrawler. At one time I had a rabbit cage that was underneath the deck here. And of course all that rabbit manure went down there and everything loved it. So I'm gonna go ahead and water it a little bit in with the organic rev so it can get a good start. Make sure the roots are gonna stay covered there and let it be. And I'm gonna put this rest over here on this rose. Okay. That is another chore down that I've been wanting to get done. Now I will come back with um, the mulch when I get it and mulch this really well. And that'll help it also. So forgive all the background noise. I've got a lot going on around here today. But here is the clematis that I was telling you about that has just all of a sudden failed. It was growing beautifully. It was climbing up through the fence. It looked as gorgeous as this one as far as the leaves. It hadn't bloomed yet. But, and this one has bloomed so beautifully. Now the funny story behind this one is last year I thought I had lost it and that's why I planted this one here. And they are only planted a few inches apart at the base. So there's no, you know, nothing like a gopher or anything ate them. I let me look down in here, see if you can see down at the base. Let me go over here. Can you see the bamboo post? That's where they are planted and yeah, well, let's see, they're about six inches apart down there. And it's just a complete mystery why one would thrive and the other would suddenly, after growing beautifully, start drying up. So if you have one that fails, just know that it happens. But also this one, um, it could come back next year. It could recover next spring just fine. Last spring or last fall, this one I thought I had lost it. So it goes to show, you just don't know, especially when they come up from the roots. So I will um, go ahead and prune this one back this late, later on in this fall, and then just hope for the best next spring. So that, my friends, is it for today. The one garden chore that was at the top of my list, and that was transplanting the bourbon clematis, and then chopping back the HF young clematis, and putting up a support for it in the direction I want it to grow next season. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and or share with your friends and we will be back and we'll be transplanting some more things because this time of year, fall is perfect and the weather's gonna be perfect. So I've got a lot of things I need to get moved and or cleaned up and I'll take you along for the ride. All right, I'll see you in the next video, bye.